Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about um, inverse operations and what we mean by one-to-one -one functions. Now, remember we've been talking about functions. Now, a function is a process, right, that we're applying to a number in this particular case. For example, let's suppose our function was uh, we're multiplying the number by 3 and we're subtracting 4, okay? Now, if you look at this, then what would be the uh, reverse process? So this is the function process here. Okay. And uh, what we want to do is, what's the reverse process? Now, the reverse process, we have to look at what order things happened. All right, so what did we do? All right, well, we multiplied by uh, 3, and then we subtracted 4. So the last thing we did was subtracted 4. So the reverse process, if I write it in terms of a function of x, the reverse process is, of course, uh, adding 4. And then the next thing that happened uh, before that was we multiplied by 3, so we have to undo that, we'd undo that, and we'd get 3. So this appears to be the inverse operation or process of this particular function. And uh, we can talk about easier ones than that. Let's suppose I had, I just wanted to double. Then the reverse process would in fact be to halve. Okay. All right, so this is what we mean by the reverse process. Now, can this happen all the time? Well, not really, because let's suppose we had our process was uh, x squared. Okay, now let's just take a couple of values. Let's suppose I take x is equal to 2, then I would produce um, y is equal to 4. Then if I, so that's going in that direction. Okay, now if I want to come back this direction, what do I have to do to the 4? The inverse process you'd think would be square root. Well, what's the square root of 4? Well, it could be 2 or negative 2, because negative 2 squared is also 4, and 2 squared is also 4. So we have an ambiguity here that means that we've got two choices, and we don't know which is the correct choice. And the difference between these kinds of functions here, of course, this one is a straight line, and this one is not. Now, if we look at a straight line, all right, what we have is 1 x value produces one y value. Right, in the case of the squaring function, right, then what we have here, of course, is um, we have uh, this x value produces this y value, and this negative x value here produces this same y value, which is 4. So you see that I have two y values, or sorry, I have two x values, all right, produces one y value. So in other words, I have these ordered pairs. All right, and so notice that we have the same y value here. Now you remember that when we talked about functions, we actually had the, um, the vertical line test, all right, which meant that we couldn't have two first elements, all right, the same, two x values, all right, for any two different ordered pairs. Well, now, to get what's called a one-to-one -one function, which is going to allow us to do this reverse process, we need this to be um, so that I don't have two y values as well. So if I was to look at a picture of a function where this is the domain and this is the range, okay, and here's our function, then this point here must go only to one point here. This point here can only go to one point here. This point here can only go to one point here. This is what I mean, a one-to-one -one function. If it was not one-to-one, -one, then what we could have is this one here and this one here could go to the same value. Now, these are different x values, but we have the same y value over here. And that's exactly what's happening here. I've had a negative 2 and a, and a 2 here, and this was my squaring function, then this would be going to 4. So this is not 
one to one. All right, so hopefully you understand what we mean by a one to one function here. And our actual mathematical definition says this, that a function is one to one if for the elements a, b in the domain of the function, if I don't have a and b being the same, then I don't have f of a and f of b being the same. Now, if you look at this, what this really means is if this is a here and this is b here, notice that a and b are not the same point, then that is going to imply that when I go over here to f of a and I get f of b, they are not going to be the same. So a not equal to b here implies that f of a is not equal to f of b here. Okay. Right, now we have to decide um, whether a function is one to one or not. So what we have to look at is, well, what's a technique for actually doing that? Well, what we do is we turn this around. We say, all right, if a is not equal to b implies that f of a is not equal to f of b, then we say, well, suppose, all right, we turn this around and we say f of a is equal to f of b. What would that imply about a and b? Well, it implies that a must be equal to b. So if these two are equal, then they must have come from equal points over here, where this is the domain and this is the range. So let's suppose then that f of a is equal to f of b. Then in this case here, what I have is negative 5a plus 3 is equal to negative 5b plus 3. So subtracting 3 from both sides, right, notice that we have negative 5a equals negative 5b. Dividing by negative 5, this implies that a is equal to b. So when f of a is equal to f of b, we've shown that a is equal to b as well. And so this is exactly the same. All right, this is what's called the converse um, argument. All right, if a is not equal to b implies a is f of a is not equal to f of b, then we can prove this by saying, well, let's suppose that f of a is equal to f of b, then that shows that a must have been equal to b. So it's showing exactly the same thing, but it's just easier to do. All right, well, what about this one here? All right, what if we have f of x equals the square root of x 16 minus x squared? Okay, well, how would we do that? Well, it's not too difficult to actually see that we can use what's called a counterexample. Because if we can show, all right, that um, f of a of a point, for example, so let's take uh, a is equal to, um, let's make it easy for ourselves. Um, Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's try 2. And let's say b is negative 2. Notice that a is not equal to b. Well, let's have a look at what happens if I take what is f of 2. Well, f of 2 is going to be the square root of 16 minus 2 squared, which, of course, is the square root of 12. Now, remember, this is the principal square root, so it's positive square root of 12. What's f of negative 2? Well, it's going to be square root of 16 minus the square root of negative 2. The square root of negative 2. So this is going to be the square root of 16 minus 4, which of course is 12. Notice that what we have here is f of a is not, is, sorry, equal to f of b. So notice that f of a not equaling f of b does not imply that f of a is not equal to f of b. In fact, we got the same thing. All right, so where this one was 1 to 1, this one is not one to one. So we use a counterexample, all right, to show that. Right, so the next thing that we can do is a horizontal line test because um, notice that we talked about the squaring function and whenever I had this, the squaring function was not one to one because I had these two points here. So we can now introduce what's called the horizontal line test that says if any horizontal line intersects the graph at a function, right, in no more than one point, then the function is one-to-one. -one. So we have now got two tests, right, we have a vertical line test, 
all right, to test whether it's a function or just a relation. Now we have a horizontal line test to determine whether it's a special kind of function, which is a one-to-one -one function. In other words, one x value is mapped to one y value and no more than that. So notice even relations, if I have this circle, which is a relation, not a function, all right, it doesn't obey the horizontal line test, so it is not one-to-one, -one, just like it doesn't obey the vertical line test, so it's not a function. Right, notice that if I have a function like the cube function, all right, then if I put a horizontal line, then this will be one-to-one. -one. This is not one-to-one. -one. Squaring function is not one-to-one. -one. The power of four function will not be one-to-one. -one. Notice that if I have a cubic function that looks like this, all right, this is not one-to-one -one because it actually has three points all right, that have the same y value. So the horizontal line test is a very easy way to see whether a, a function graph right, is in fact one-to-one.